Look at that right there. On a bit. On a bit. On, on a bit. This. this is Jim. He's a scientist. This is Otto. He's also a scientist. But they both like to make films, mostly about me. I'm a sandfish, and my name is Onabek. Onabek Fiss. I live in the Cedarburg, South Africa, the world. I've had a few problems along the way, like all my rivers drying up. An alien thing! And now only have a few friends left. But there's this really cool project that involves... Science! Film! Water! With our powers combined, this is Saving Sandfish! On a bit first. Dude, I don't think I've ever seen the Beetle River Valley this green. It's just like, looks like every single little plant and bowl is just bursting to the surface. Springtime, when everything sort of seems to happen in the Beedo Valley. I mean, we were here almost exactly a year ago looking for spawning fish and we didn't find any. We haven't seen any fish yet. We'll have to keep coming back until we find them. You can't just expect to sort of parachute into the valley and be there at the exact right time. You've got to spend a lot of time out here and you've got to really try to understand the river from the sandfish perspective. So this spring I think we're a bit more prepared to put in the time out here to give ourselves the best shot of seeing this unseen natural phenomenon that is the sandfish spawning migration. I think it thinks we can't see it. Look at that beak. What do greyhounds eat? They must be fish feeders. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Clear, bubbling, glistening. If I was a sandfish, I'd be spawning this afternoon. Yeah. So we're going to drive down to the lower part of the river and have a look at a few of the most likely places to see if we can find any fish that might have moved into the river. Yeah, having like the river flowing this clear makes our job of finding fish a lot easier. We can look for them, we can set GoPros, fly the drone over a stretch of river and if there's a bunch of fish that have come up into the river, we should see them with the water this clear. Like in my experience, most of the, the river fish in this part of the world spawn in little areas like this, where there's nice cobbles and where the water gets nice and aerated. I think that's a good environment for the eggs to develop. But from chatting to Sarah, she spoke about the fish coming up and actually spawning in sandy areas. So, with the sandfish, what they prefer for laying their eggs, it's, it's a bit of a mystery and yeah, we really don't know. So that's one of the questions that hopefully we're going to start to unravel. I'm going to stay with my leg by the car. While Jim is in his wetsuit, he's going to get the aquatic. Fight net, schnockles, GoPro. And we are three. Didn't see any signs of fish life at all, but we set a net and we're gonna go check another uh, another nice pool a bit further downstream. Oh, a couple of baboons running up through the purple flowers. You know what they say, baboons and the purple flowers. Number one indication of sandfish spawning. Snorkel riffle number two, so gonna just snorkel through the stretch of river. It's beautifully clear to see if we can uh, spot any sandfish that might have come into the river over the last couple of days. Do 
These nets are from Australia. So there they call them fight nets. Thanks National Geographic for the funding to buy these nets. I swim, I swim. And then I encounter the wings of this fake net. And then I follow the wing. I follow the wing. I follow the wing all the way into the opening. And I wait there for the next morning when the scientists come, take me out, have a look at me, hold me gently, and then release me back into the river so I can continue to spawn. Day one, the summer is. Maybe we're a bit early. All we're really going on is the uh, is the stories from Sarah who remembers what the spawning migrations look like in the Bido. It's from Augustus van now. It's the most iets om te zien as die sinne kom so die stroom op en maak die water so golfy. Anecdotes from Willem in the Oorlogskloof. The vis het toe gereeld getrek soos wat ons gesê het in here, September, October month. So we're really chasing ghosts out here in the Vido. You know, we don't know where they spawn, when they spawn. We're just trying to use our fishy intuition and hopefully get lucky. Any sandfish? Oh, the Sandfish? Anything like that? Oh man, just only focused on the flowers. Let's see what Honey's got to say. Honey, any sandfish in these parts? Mmm. Love you, Honey. When I, I come to these kind of environments, I need to make sure that my crutch is on 4x4 mode just gives them a bit of like all-terrain kind of control especially on these downhill ones crutch control needs to be very good channeling my inner geometric tortoise mm. well, sometimes you need to slow down and smell the flowers so we've left this net in overnight let's go see if we if we've had any luck So the idea when bringing in a fight net is to make sure anything in the net doesn't swim out. So we start off by folding up the wings from the front. This is normally like a two or three person job, but because I've got a PhD, I can do this all on my own. Oh wow, we got a fish. We got two fish, but unfortunately both of them were bluegill. What this means is the bluegill are up in the river already much earlier in the summer than what we probably would have expected. And what it also means is that when the sandfish do come up and spawn and when they young hatch, little bluegills like this are going to be uh, waiting, for, waiting for them in these pools. And even a small little bluegill like this will, will be pretty efficient at gobbling up the little sandfish after they've hatched. Not a great sign. Here we got the jewel beetle, one of the coolest critters in this part of the world in spring. Look at those yellow tufts! What a beaut! So right now I'm standing at the exact place where the Beetle River flows down the valley and joins the Durin River. Sometimes during spring those sandfish will respond to some aquatic trigger, some signal that we don't yet understand and make a 90 degree turn at the Durin here and start their spawning migration up into the Bido River and that's what we're out here looking for. Looks like some, some possible feeding marks on the rocks here. Anyway, basically what we're going to do is put a GoPro in the river, nice deep pool here, and that way we can record what's happening underwater without a big clumsy human splashing around and scaring everything off. A 
Hallo, meneer. Sunfish. Uh, sorry, okay, can we ask you a question? Sunfish. Sun All of the questions we're asking, you know, the answers are underwater. So what's the point of driving around the Bido Valley in like shorts and a t-shirt? We haven't seen much, but uh, we will continue the quest for the spawning sunfish. Don't hold out much hope because so far we've just caught bluegills and platanus, but you never know. Oh, three platanus! Look at that. Slimy, buggly eyed. Oh my gosh, this platana is looking straight at me. Hello, have you seen any sandfish? These guys are an important part of the food webs in these seasonal rivers because they can survive long periods of harshness, you know, whether it's riverbeds drying out and just leaving small little pools with not a lot of oxygen. For a platana, that's no problem. The adults are probably food for things like otters and herons and then the tadpoles will be eaten by fish. I reckon one day when all other freshwater life has disappeared and climate change has happened, these platanas will reign supreme and they'll be setting fight nets to sample us. Day eight, searching for sandfish and the bloomer is eight. It is a pollinator, man. We have two new sunfish yachters in the house. Oh, three, three new three sunfish yachters. Two, three. And <laughs> Let's go check the fight net. One! Tadpole! Woo. One! Beetle lobby! It's like driving through the scratch patch. another day searching for sandfish in the Bido. As you can probably see, the weather's changing. It's getting pretty extreme. We've got this crazy old windmill above us here. So we had a look at the weather charts and we can see there is a big cold front moving in over the west coast, moving in over the Cedarburg mountains, and that's probably gonna bring rain to this valley this evening. The farmers are all very excited. We are probably gonna head back with our tails between our legs. And yeah, that'll, that'll round off another day of searching for sandfish in the Bido Valley. Day nine, in the annex, you can see the rain clouds. We really just don't know how many fish swim up the river to spawn. We don't know how long they stay in the river to spawn. We don't know what kind of habitat they spawn in. So we're kind of fumbling around in the dark, but that's all important information to know about if you want to understand more about what they need to survive and hopefully one day thrive again in these rivers. This, this like could be the rainfall and the pulse of flow that stimulates something in the sandfish psychology and just changes something in their brain 
kickstarts the early thoughts of a, of a migration. I know, but also a cool little toad. Excuse me, Mr. Toad. Have you seen any sandfish swimming past your home in the last 24 hours? He says no. Just bluegills and dirty water. He says he expects them in about a week or two. We should come back then and go back to Cape Town. And first. Woo! Welcome to day 15 and you can see I'm smiling because we've just had a message from Leonard who's up in the Beedo Valley at the moment and he's seen the first signs of some big sandfish moving into the Beedo River. It's freaking unbelievable, I can't believe this. So we've dropped everything, packed the car full of stuff it's full 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 and we are just leaving cape town in the rain heading back to the cedarburg um, and it's super exciting looks like the serengeti until you can see like escort chumbling away there on the beachfront Woo. Yes, sis. 10 to 9, Saturday night. There's like no cars around. It's just us driving through the end of a cold front, through the mountains. The Ornibex have blessed this journey. You can feel it. Ornibex, Ornibless. How about this spot, dude? Lekker, let the tent building begin. Look, there's a braai. I just think Onnebeck would think of hot chocolate. Dude, you know, I think they'd like to come out, have one cup, have a quick chat, and then get back to business. Mm. Mortarberg. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, daar sy hier. Mm. Oh my god! It's <laughs> one way to clean your windscreen. This day 16, the sun is out after the rain has come and we're cruising down from Enjo to the lower Beedo River. Dude, in the night there could have been the Ornibex like drifting over this causeway. Check it out. Okay, dude, this is proper pulse of flow, my word. Look at the Ornibex. So we've just come through the gate into Mirakral Farm and we're going down to look at one of the pools kind of 
midway through the area that we think is a spawning area and Leonard's leading the way this morning. We're literally arriving right now at this pool where, where he saw some really special sightings of, of sandfish yesterday and we're going to go get our first look, hopefully, of adult sandfish in the Bido River. I think here they are, here they are, there, there's more now, there's a lot more. See the shadows? Yeah, torpedoes, there's a lot more now. This is rad. Check it, check it. Wow, that was cool, that was feeding. So that thing yes. just came out and we saw the flash of the scales on the, on the side of it, reflecting in the sun, feeding in the current. So, this is incredible, you know, we can see probably about, looks like 20, maybe 25 sandfish, like solid. In the in the water there, and yeah, they, some of these fish might have swum up <laughs> from the during last night while we were setting up our camp. Ooh, just an honor back of adult. My son, as crazy as he is about water, wanted to get in his boat, <laughs> so I gave in and I was like. Let's go for a boat ride. So I walked up in the middle of the pool, about waist deep, and then we spooked a fish. And it looked, it looked like a yellow fish actually. And I thought, no, this, this was a big sandfish. So I took him back and we walked up this bank. And then we stood here like this, in the water, like I said, it was quite murky. And we stood and watched and watched and then I started seeing the shapes. Uh, and I realized we were looking at sandfish here. Yeah. You don't know if it's going to happen. You always come and you never see them, and you don't know if they spawn every year or whether you're going to hit it lucky and, and see them when they actually come up and spawn. We were just so stoked. How crazy is this dude? Like ornabeks, adult ornabeks in the Vido River. 10, 20, maybe 30 of them in this pool. We've been looking for these things for like over a year, and you start to wonder whether it actually could ever happen whether it's just in our imaginations and here we are and here they are and just seeing them in the river is like one of the best things I've ever experienced it's very cool the weather forecast looks pretty good over the next few days so we're just going to hang around and wait for the water to drop the water to get a bit clearer and just observe these fish and learn as much as we can about what they do once they arrive in the Bido River. Can't wait. On the next episode of Saving Sandfish, we return to the Bido River Valley to indulge in more flowers and follow the sandfish upriver as they continue their journey to spawn. Alle magen us met de steekjes op die sand, dan lele so, dan lekker de le vium so met de steek. Daar is so, alle draai so, na draai le so.